Good morning. Okay, Ross, what do you say in Italian? Buongiorno. Okay, you have to get the J in it. So let's try it again. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. There you go. Now we got some, some Italian action there. If you're um, Italian and you're online, my apologies. <laughs> Welcome and good morning, beautiful people. It is with deep gratitude that I welcome you to this gathering of prayer, song, word, communion, and silence. Know that whenever you participate in this service, in this gathering, here in the sanctuary or online, your presence enriches our community. We gather here in this place and remotely because sometimes we need a holy place to help us recognize the holiness in all place, in every place. Sometimes we need holy time to recognize that all time is holy. We gather because we need a holy meal and a holy time and a holy gathering to recognize the holiness in all of creation. And we begin, as we always do, with a land acknowledgement, so let us stretch our hands to the land. The changes in temperature, the turning of the leaves, remind us of the regular rhythms of the seasons where we live, although they feel a little disrupted this year. We raise our hands to the Lekongwen, to the indigenous-speaking the indigenous people, the Lekongwen people, the Songhees and the Esquimalt First Nations, we know that this is their land, this ancestral and sacred land. And so we light this candle. In recognition of the intention that it takes to build reconciliation with open hearts. We stretch out our hands to each other, beloved community. We recognize that in our simple humanity that we share, that sometimes we don't always respect, seek truth and justice in our relationships, and we need support and care from each other. So we give thanks for each person gathered here, those who gather at other times viewing this service. We hold each other in prayer and light. I am a child of God. I am a glimpse of God's new creation. I am a child of God, I am a child of God, I am an endless prayer, I am a yearning for contemplation, I am you all. That was beautiful. Our call to worship as light pours from the heaven soaking the earth we celebrate that it may produce good things. 
So God pours love upon us that we too might produce goodness and peace. We have been blessed by many gifts and talents. God desires that we use these gifts and talents for the healing, for healing, peace, and hope. Come, us, come, let us worship and celebrate the mighty love and power of God. Amen. So, some announcements. Um, this is really about the life and work of the community. I know it was a bit of a mystery to Hildy, but we'll get this straightened out. So, I would like to give thanks to um, Diego and Adam and Leslie for assisting this community, and um, Angela, of course. I'd also like to thank uh, Reverend Hildy Seal and Greg Powell for their leadership. Our liturgy our, is the work of the community, and each week we build a community and set a big table here in the middle of this Gary Oak room. Together we are reminded of what matters, so I'm wondering if there is someone who would like to read our light liturgy our, our, and our scripture and assist with communion. Look at everybody putting their hands up. Yes. Bruce, what would you like to do this morning? You'll do the scripture, light liturgy, Larry. Wonderful. And two volunteers for uh, Trudy and David. Wonderful. Thank you. So some quick introductions. If you've forgotten who I am, I'm Reverend Beth Walker. Maybe you want to forget me. Joining me in worship this morning is Adam, Angela, and Diego. As we continue uh, with the season of creation, the season of creation invites us to regard all of creation as a radiant manifestation of the spirit. All of creation lives and moves and has its being within the heart of Christ, in whom all things hold together. Now the saints of the church help us to remember that faith extends beyond ourselves Words and beauty can assist us to open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to something more. We do recognize that each bring different things to this gathering, and we bring our own questions, our own insights. So here's some questions for you to think about today as we continue on in our gathering. How do you pray? Now, I recognize I ask this question a lot. And you'll hear later on in the sermon that I wrestle with it. So um, we'll continue to think about how do we pray? In silence, with the work of hands or heart? And how does your prayer life sustain you? How does your prayer life sustain your life? One of the beautiful traditions in the Christian faith is lighting a candle when we pray. And in this community, we rely on batteries to hold the energy. So may the flicker of this flame remind us of the Spirit's presence with us. A long time ago, Jesus walked the rocky roads and lakeside paths of Galilee. He journeyed to the temple and wandered the streets and villages. He sailed out on the water, climbed mountains, and prayed in olive groves. In, these place, in all these places, he connected with the earth. He saw her as an incredible gift. Jesus invited people to be attentive to nature, saying, Lift up your eyes and see how the fields are already white for harvest. And look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap, 
nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly parent feeds them. Jesus came to help us remember who we are, that together with the earth, the sun and the moon, we are all sisters and brothers, members of the same family. When they asked Jesus who he was, he said, I am the light. This light lives in my heart and in your heart and within this magnificent and creative universe. It is the light that calls us to beloved and tells us that we are all belong to God. Amen. Divina is a spiritual practice, and listening and praying with sacred scriptures, well, it takes time to sit and wonder about this ancient story. So let us take a moment to center, to notice our feet on the floor, feel your weight in the chair, and take a breath. Notice your breath entering and exiting your chest. Now take your attention to the top of your head. Feel a connection to the sky, to the heavens. Find yourself despite the banging in the kitchen centered to the earth and to the sky. Find yourself grounded and centered in our Creator. And if I could ask Bruce to come forward. The scripture this morning is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. 
Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later, he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? In the way of Lectio Divina, let us hear some portions of this text again. What word or phrase stands out to you or question? Is there an image that lingers or comes to mind? Then Jesus told a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. Will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will God delay long in helping them? I tell you, God will quickly grant justice to them. So I ask, I wonder if there's a word or a phrase that has come to you this day, or perhaps a question. I would describe justice as faith and fairness. Faith and fairness. Hmm. Solidarity. Solidarity. Justice. Justice. Not to lose heart. Let us pray. God of gratitude and hope, what do we do with this scripture? You who have named us love, our beloved children, us as beloved children we open our hearts to you and we linger in words and images that we have been received and given may these gifts of our hearts and minds continue to stir us to justice amen
So I woke up that Friday morning, just a week ago, and I felt like a stab in my heart. I simply could not leave Rome without one more visit to the Barini statue of St. Teresa of Avila. So I got up, I finished packing all of my stuff and said goodbye to my traveling companions and walked, no, ran down the street to the church of Santa de Maria del Victoria. Instantly. As I walked across the threshold, I was transported into another time and place. I was alone in this beautiful jewel box of an over-the-top architecture. And I mean, there is just nothing like it. There's flip-flopping angels and golden sunbeams and clouds and beautiful frescoes, Adam, and every type of marble that Ross could imagine. And it's like sitting in a theater. You may have noticed in one of the pictures in the PowerPoint today, and all of the pictures today um, were from the interior of that church that the patrons who paid for the interior of the Cor Cornell Chap uh, Chapel had box-type theater seats to witness this moment when heaven and earth became one. Now, this art was created as a counter to the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther was busy stripping the Christian faith down to the word, one way to encounter the holy. The Catholic Church was ramping up in a counter-reformation. It was employing artists to make art, to share the beauty of faith and stories of the saints. Like up until that point, everything in a church was done in Latin. If you didn't see a picture, you actually didn't understand what, was, what they were talking about. I often joke with Ross that it's kind of like the original PowerPoints. That's what the, the pictures were. So they employed Barini, a man of sculpting and theater and architecture, an artist in direct competition with my buddy, by the way, Raphael and Michelangelo, just to name a few. Now, not all artists who produce religious works are themselves religious. But Barini was deeply, deeply religious. And I would say you can only create what you have truly known. In this sculpture, he creates Saint Teresa in a moment of prayer. And I mean, a deep and intimate relationship with the Holy. And no one, no one has ever made prayer and divine love look so good. In the work of the 16th century, St. Teresa is swooning high on a cloud of gravity-defying marble. Teresa throws her head back in a silent cry of ecstasy in the encounter of prayer. And I couldn't help but focus on the nun's bare foot that dangles. Do you see it dangling there in midair? Barini amplifies a mysterious angel who rises above the saint and giggles almost. You can hear him or her pulling back a golden-tipped arrow. The angel is ready to plunge it deep into the limp body of the saint. Mission accomplished, Barini, who used all of his talents of architecture, interior design, and sculpting to create an overwhelming experience for those who walk into this space to inspire faith and compassion. And I was and always will be taken to my knees. I can assure you that my prayer life does not look like this. However, it is something to aspire to. Now, Teresa is more than this moment of passion. She was one who was willing to share her gifts and her skills with the community despite what others thought of her. She was a Spanish noblewoman, a woman of privilege who sacrificed her very comfortable life, one who was called to a covenant life, one of isolation and prayer, 
in the Catholic Church. She was a Carmelite nun, a prominent Spanish mystic, a religious reformer. That's a lot to say about a woman in the 16th century. She was an author, a theologian of the contemplative life, and a survivor of the Spanish Inquisition. Honestly, she was an agent of change, and she earned the rare distinction for a woman being declared a doctor of the church. So I wonder, as a woman, what she would have thought of this statue created in her name in recognition of her sainthood. Truly, she had shared this vision, but she was, for most, she is reduced to the single moment of passion with God. So I'm not so sure what she would have thought of it. But this is a beautiful statue. This place did what it was supposed to do. It made me pause in the brilliance of all that is possible. Think about my own life of prayer. And it's complicated to be sure. So if you don't have your seatbelts on, get ready. I wonder. I wonder about prayer. I mean, I've been doing this for a very long time, and you can hear that my prayers each week sound like knocking on heaven's door. Because much like a persistent widow who came to the judge to ask for justice, prayer can feel like I have been knocking for justice to an unjust judge for a very long time. Now, I know lots of people who are persistent in prayer. Those who cry for justice remain unanswered. I do. Our, in our scripture today, Luke tries to sweeten the story, and maybe we have to give Luke a bit of a break this morning when he said that unlike the horrible judge, God grants justice quickly. I and countless others, and I'm thinking some of you here today by your responses, wonder, because we see that our sick still die, and war still plagues the planet, making widows of too many. And despite our prayers, racists, misogynistic bigots still clamor for power, the world seems to live in fear of mass destruction as um, of mass destruction as weapons are put on parade. See, I can't even speak about it. It just makes me so mad. And I hear my grandmother's voice who survived two great wars calling from behind the veil. Have we learned nothing? Refugee camps, though filled, are dismantled, and the cries of motherless children and children's widows for justice remain still ignored and unheard. Seemingly, black lives and women lives don't matter. Systemic injustices against indigenous people, against the working for the jobless poor, remain fiercely entrenched. The litany of human misery, we could just go on and on, and you just have to turn on CNN or the news for five or ten minutes to hear about what's happening in our world, and that's not to mention the climate crisis. Right, Donna? So I sit. I sit in prayer. Can I believe? Can I trust in? How can I not lose heart over a God who is like a judge, who appears to pick and choose whose prayers to answer? Can I preach? Can I preach a God who is like a father of a privileged few who must be kicked and conjoled and nudged in just the right way to be convinced that I am worthy to be listened to? I can't. I was very busy at the feet of St. Teresa. And I just can't believe that all there is to this parable of Jesus, and I refuse to add my voice to what seems like a relentless liturgy, litany of voices who share that this is who God is. No, for me, this gospel of God cannot be reduced to some flattened moral scolding to pray a bit harder to a God of the privileged. Especially 
when I sit at St. Teresa, who in her heart had a deep connection to God and in her words shared with us, Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes in which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he, God blesses all the world. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours, here on this earth, yours is the work to serve and the joy of compassion. No hands but yours to heal the wounded world. But yours to soothe all its suffering, no touch but yours to bind the broken hope of the people of God. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours here on this earth. Yours is the world. Serve with the joy of compassion. No eyes but yours to see as Christ would see, to find the lost, to gaze with compassion. No eyes but yours to glimpse the holy joy of the city of God. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours. Here on this earth, yours is the work to serve with the joy of steps to build a lasting peace for the children of God. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours. Here on this earth, yours is the work to serve with the joy of Loving Creator, we celebrate our unity with you. We are indeed one body. You are the mystery in whom we live and move and have our being. May the sharing of this feast and community continue to shape us as a people of compassion, truth, and justice. Help us to see the face of Christ in creation herself and everyone we meet. Amen. 
We share ministry in this place and in this world, and I want to thank you all for being present this day. I want to thank each one of you for the gifts that you share with this community, with your financial gifts that you share online or here in the sanctuary. So, Holy One, take what we have to offer. Bless our gifts so that there might be many. Bless the gifts offered this day, our time, and our talent with the Spirit of God. Amen. So, beloved, as you return to your own areas of ministry, may the blessing of galaxies and stars be with you, the great stars and the small stars, the planets and the asteroids, the comets be yours. May the blessing of the sun and the moon and the earth be yours, the oceans and rivers and continents and the mountain ranges. May you be blessed by the wind and the cloud and the rain. We pray for rain. The blessing of the forest be yours. May you be blessed by the fish and the birds and all of the mammals. The blessings of the salmon and the eagle and the cougar and the mountain goat are yours. May you experience the presence of the one who continues to create with you, within the earth, and all around you. Amen. Ministry announcements. <clears throat> so we have many birthdays in October. Um, it was Shannon and Ben's anniversary last week, and we're also celebrating Leslie and Linda's birthday, and Wynn. Wynn's was yesterday, Les Linda's is today, and Leslie's was last week. <laughs> so uh, we won't sing happy birthday, but if you happen to be on Facebook or see them around, um, you'll know that they are celebrating. Bruce, would you like to come up and share your announcement and then we will sing our so last song sing a happy hallelujah sing it out with heart and style we're the echo of god's laughter we're the image of god's smile Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. We're the proof of God's good humor. We're the twinkle in God's eye. Made to shine, reflect the glory. Given light and space to fly. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. Sarah laughed at God's good humor. Mary sang and David danced. Jesus smiled and hugged the children. So is life for us in hand. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. Every day sing hallelujah. We are loved, though so absurd. Human, foolish, chosen people. God so takes us at our word. Hallelujah, all creation, hallelujah. 